Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Israelites, the kingdom of darkness do not want you to draw closer to the Most High, nor does the kingdom of darkness want you to unite. Unity brings the Most High's power into a household and nation. The scripture said a kingdom or a household that is divided against itself could not stand. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. The spirit of division is running rampant in the awakening. Unfortunately, not too many Israelites can recognize when the kingdom of darkness is attacking our people on a national level and on a personal level. Some Israelites cannot discern when an unclean spirit is using them to bring division and chaos in the atmosphere. Most Israelites simply go wherever their emotions take them. Before you react, it is important, Israelites, to take a step back and assess the situation before you allow your flesh to speak and make decisions for you. When you operate in the flesh, you are giving the kingdom of darkness permission to use you. What most Israelites do not realize is that when you let your flesh speak, it is like Satan or an unclean spirit speaking through you. It's either you are operating in the spirit or in the flesh. When Israelites are operating in the spirit and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Most High is speaking through his people. Walking in the spirit brings unity, the Most High's peace, mercy, and many other good things that comes from serving the Most High. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. If everyone in the awakening was truly operating in the spirit, the presence of the Most High would be dominant in the awakening. When the flesh is your primary way of analyzing the world, you become an agent of chaos. The scriptures reveal to us that you cannot please the Most High in the flesh. The Most High would never encourage you to participate in foolish debates or any other sinful behaviors in His presence. Where there is strife and envy and hate, there is confusion. All of these spirits come from the work of the flesh. The awakening is saturated with these spirits. The awakening has many Israelites who bring division and strife to every platform they visit. These individuals are still carnally minded. They have yet to learn how to operate in the spirit. Unfortunately, many Israelites cannot discern when they are being used by these spirits. Due to their lack of knowledge, they allow these spirits to carry them astray. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? We can no longer ignore the chaos the kingdom of darkness is bringing into the awakening through emotional Israelites. Every day we have to take the necessary steps to grow in our journey. We must learn how to work with the Holy Spirit to overcome the attacks from the kingdom of darkness. A strategy the kingdom of darkness use is to stir up your emotions, then send an agent that will satisfy your flesh desires to steal the wisdom the most high pour into your spirit. The scriptures has an informative parable explaining what is happening in the awakening presently. The parable of the sower disclosed the multiple ways the kingdom of darkness come to steal the wisdom and understanding the Most High is sharing with his people. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, 
And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. The scripture said, if you have an ear to hear, let them hear. Yeshua went on to explain the parable of the sower. When a person hear the word or a message and do not understand, the kingdom of darkness come and steal what was sown into their heart. Those seeds have fallen by the wayside. Any seed that has fallen by the wayside will not grow. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received a seed by the wayside. The seeds that fell onto stony grounds are the Israelites who received the word or message with gladness. However, after some time has passed, the word was not deeply rooted in them. When persecution come, they quickly depart from the message, take offense, and come against the word. I can bear witness to this, especially in the times we are living in. I have had Israelites who do not comprehend some of the messages on this channel get offended. They mistake the message that is made to help them grow on their journey with personal attacks against their character. The word of the Most High cut you. I am only the messenger. If the word deeply penetrate your spirit, then the Most High is dealing with you. You have to seek the Most High for the answer. The kingdom of darkness can easily manipulate Israelites who allow the seed to fall on stony grounds. The kingdom of darkness will keep them stagnant. Five, 10, 15 years would pass and they are still at the same place. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. The seeds among the thorns are the Israelites who hear the word or message. However, the cares of this world, the flesh, steal it from them. Many Israelites are preoccupied about the affairs of this world that they miss the most high in the process. He also that received a seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. The seeds that have fallen on good grounds are the Israelites who hear the word and understand it. Not only do they understand, they allow the Most High to show himself strong through them. These Israelites are not only hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. You can identify these individuals by their fruits or behavior. But he that received a seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Israelites, if you allow the Most High to be your teacher, and the Holy Spirit to disciple you, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Everything you need to know, the Most High will reveal it to you. If you are diligently seeking the Most High, you will find Him. The scripture said, draw near to the Most High and He will draw near to you. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Satan, no, if you comprehend this truth, he can no longer control you. That is why he sent many distractions to keep you in bondage. Yeshua said, he speak in parables because it is given to his people to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to those who are perishing, it is not given to them. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Israelites, you have to learn how to identify the rebellious Israelites and agents that are stationed at certain platforms to come against the awakening. 
in addition to be a snare to you and lead you astray. No amount of scriptures you present to them will change their hearts. These agents were not given the opportunity to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. That is why they lack understanding. These workers of iniquity made a covenant to serve the kingdom of darkness. You have to make your choice. Do not entertain them, nor allow their lies find a place in your heart. The scripture said, submit yourself to Yah, resist the devil, and he would flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It is time, Israelites, that you start to obey the word of Yah. In the times we are living, you cannot afford to allow rebellious Israelites and unclean spirits cause you to miss the kingdom. To the Israelites that bring confusion and strife everywhere they go, you need to examine yourself. The kingdom of darkness deceive you into believing you are doing the will of the Most High. Do not be deceived. The Most High does not show partiality, nor is he the author of confusion. It is important that you examine yourself before you make important decisions and expressing unstable emotions. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Israelites are condemning themselves with their own words and actions. I see Israelites in the awakening giving the kingdom of darkness permission to use them daily. The sad part is that many do not know they are being used by the kingdom of darkness to conspire against themselves. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The kingdom of darkness will use every opportunity to bring forth confusion, division, jealousy, and many other evil to stop a reconciliation and unity among us. Unclean spirits have no problem uniting or sharing the same flesh to carry out their plans. The story of the men in the tombs is a good example of spirits working together to accomplish their will. The scriptures reveal to us that the man had legions of devils dwelling in him. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. The unclean spirits controlling the man were not fighting among themselves. They were happy to have a place to dwell. Unclean spirits have no problem working together and sharing the same body to bring forth the kingdom of darkness will into the physical realm. The workers of iniquity will work together to make sure their agenda is executed successfully. The Rona is a very good example of workers of iniquity coming together to bring forth the will of the kingdom of darkness. The satanic media is on one accord promoting fear and confusion. The workers of iniquity make sure the alternative media is silenced or limit their influence on the people. Small business owners and innocent bystanders like the nurses and doctors who are on the front line are suffering through the coronavirus attack against the people. The CEOs from major corporations, religious leaders, and greedy politicians conspire among themselves to see to it that the changes their idol wants to manifest are executed. The wicked will stop at nothing to see to it that the will of the kingdom of darkness is done by any means necessary. It is through the success of the kingdom of darkness that gives the workers of iniquity power and control of the physical realm. While the kingdom of darkness has mobilized and unites to execute a vicious attack against the people, Israelites in the awakening are fighting among themselves. They are allowing devils to blind their eyes to what is happening. We need to learn to put away our differences and come together in unity and in spirit to call on our Father to plead our case. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. If Israelites could humble themselves, just as the Most High has been commanding his people to do for multiple generations, the oppression would stop and the times of the heathen would end. How can the Most High save his people when his people are busy fighting among themselves about little things that has no value? Our ancestors allowed the kingdom of darkness to bring a separation between the Most High and them. Israelites, when you are separated from the Most High, you are at the mercies of your enemies. The Most High is not there to protect you. Sins separate you from the Most High. Where there is strife, division, and envy, the Most High is not there. Behold, 
The Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. If the Most High cannot hear you, who is protecting you? Who is answering your prayers? It is important, Israelites, that you shift your focus to the things that matter. The Most High is giving his people the opportunity to turn from their wicked ways. The busy Israelites who did not have time to fellowship with the Most High, Yah is giving them time in the mix of this so-called crisis to establish a personal relationship. Israelites, you have to recognize an opportunity and take advantage of the opportunity the Most High is giving to his people. How can we be a light to the world if we cannot come together as a people and be a light to our own community? Light overshadow everything that is covered in darkness. You cannot change your environment if you are operating in darkness. The scriptures reveal that we are the salt of the earth. However, if the salt loses its flavor, it is good for nothing. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have but lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The awakening should be a joyous time, a season of repentance and getting to know the Most High in the Spirit and in the truth. It is not the time for foolish debates, strife, and division. It is time to mature. The Most High has sent countless prophets and teachers to his people to help them. In every generation, our people persecute them and murder them. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? After our people persecute the individuals the Most High sent to help, some Israelites have the nerve to complain when their change do not come. You have no ground to stand on when you allow the kingdom of darkness to stir your emotions to come against your people. In addition, persecute your people until you destroy them. Israelites, the kingdom of darkness Feed off your emotions, especially the diabolical stubborn marine spirits, also known as water spirits. It is important to get your emotions under control. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness deceive you into taking offense to every message that penetrate your spirit to promote change. You should not be offended when listening to hard truth, especially if you are reading the Bible. The scriptures should toughen you up. The Most High described the wicked of his people as descendants of sorcerers, in addition the sons of prostitutes and adulterers. If that is not some hard truth, I do not know what is. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore, against whom do ye sport yourselves, against whom make ye a wide mouth, and draw out the tongue. Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Israelites, the scriptures reveal that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yah said he came to give you life more abundantly. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The kingdom of darkness would like to transform the awakening into a circus. It is our duty not to let that happen. If you see the kingdom of darkness coming to destroy something that is working for us, this should encourage you to fight against the wicked power that is interfering. We should not entertain the devil nor join forces with the kingdom of darkness. 
If the kingdom of darkness is fighting hard to keep you from getting closer to the most high and praying, you should fight a thousand times harder to see to it that you pray and seek the most high at such a time like this. Israelites, you must learn how to silence the strange voices. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. When the kingdom of darkness present half truth, it should inspire Israelites and strangers everywhere to pray and seek the most high. Always confirm with the most high before allowing the strange voice to cause you to come against the will of the most high. A good question to ask yourself, why is the enemy waging war against the awakening? In addition, coming against messages that is encouraging Yah's people to pray and seek the most high at this time. The workers of iniquity want you to use this time to forge covenants with the kingdom of darkness. That way, Satan and his angels can prolong their reign in the physical realm. I hear Israelites say they are waiting on the Most High or the Most High will protect them. The scriptures said the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Most High. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. You have to take a step, Israelites, in order for the Most High to order your steps. In order to activate the help of the Most High, you have to seek Him and pray to Him to make your petition known. You have to master every aspect of spiritual warfare. For example, you can pray a million prayers, but if you do not know how to establish a covenant or how to break evil covenants, how effective will your prayers be? When the kingdom of darkness come to reestablish the covenants, the unclean spirits will succeed because many only know how to pray. They are not aware that unclean spirits will come back in various ways to reestablish the covenants. Just because the Most High will fight for us, it does not mean we sit around and do nothing. Silence the lying voices that is trying to keep you in rebellion and stagnant. Israelites, you have to get up and do something about your situations. We have to work together in partnership with the Most High to find success. Satan will continue his attacks against the righteous and anything that promote peace and unity among us. You have to be wise and not allow the kingdom of darkness to lead you astray. Israelites, you must know how to identify the sneaky ways the kingdom of darkness interfere. It is time to get up and fight back. Israelites, serve the Most High in the spirit and in the truth, regardless to how much the truth hurts. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you.